Right now, I'm going in the shop to open the door for Dad. Here, I'm pressing the button, and the door is opening. Dad's gonna come and back in, and we're just going to unhook the trailer that we used to carry the four wheel for flying the plane. We got an oil heater in here, Kate. We put the oil in the bottom here and it pumps it up and heats it up and then it sprays it out with an igniter and it fires this up so we heat the shop with oil for the most time. So we don't have so much uh, money in propane and stuff. Yes. We got a little bit left, but we need to get some more for the rest of the year. Yes, we're running down to our favorite parts store ever and my dad's been friends with the owner for- Ever. Yes, forever and we're going to have so much fun. So I hope you come along for the video. Hello, welcome to Kate's Egg. Today we're going down to get oil to heat the shop and we're going to have a great day. Oil's kind of hard to find at times because we need like a thousand gallons of it to last a year or so. Get it when we can and my friend called me up and said that he had some oil so we're going to go down and make sure that we put our little paws on it before anybody else does. <laughs> yes. trailer we're going to use to haul the oil right maybe, dad maybe. possibly it has a flat tire and this is the chicken coop not in my day did we have chickens here but my dad used to remember all of the chickens so comment down below if you want a chicken coop tour <laughs> On the other side as well and it's a pretty cool chicken coop oil is super important for the shop because we definitely need to heat the shop the skies are actually really pretty today that shop right there was my grandpa's old shop and we used to use that but now we use my dad's shop Challenges backing up the pickup. No. Uh uh. It's a whole problem to get the trailer hooked up to the pickup. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh my gosh. This is an air compressor and it pumps up air so that my dad will be able to blow the tire up. We have more light in there, didn't we? Yeah. We definitely did. Dad's draining a little moisture out of the tank. Now we're going to fill up the tire. And this is kind of like a day in the life on the farm in the winter. See, we lost the cap off the thing, so the bearing's all uncovered. And... I bet it is. to grandpa's house. It was definitely chilly outside and we haven't had snow and well we did get snow last week but it's melted everywhere else but it's still on the farm here a little bit because this is kind of a shaded area. A little bit slippery here. It's actually really slippery. Aren't these skies just so beautiful? Here you can see the little rows of wheat coming up. And I'll get out in the field in this video and show you as well. This wheat is, it's all little starting to poke up out of the ground. So it's super cute and we're just on the road to go and get oil. The view out the front is so beautiful. See these mountains and then the clouds? Wow, they look great. Look at the antelope we just drove by. It's super lucky that they weren't on the road because antelope definitely do not like to move off the road. You have to honk your horn and they just don't want to move. Whereas deer will run off the road. So that's a little difference between antelope and deer when you're driving. Yeah, there's too many of them and they just don't seem to go anywhere but along the road. Yes, very true. We're getting out to check because this is coming out missing this black cover that's over here I'm going to go to the mark and get like a rope or something to tie it up so it doesn't come out like that because we could hear it while we were driving yeah. we're filling up with fuel because we're gonna burn some tow towing them shuttles home yes if we can get them home today hopefully we can yeah hopefully because they didn't have a rope at the mark so this will have to do. Yeah. Okay. Full clouds and sky. This is one of the most wonderful parts of Montana, I would say. That's why they call it the big sky country. Yes, it is. Here's power and the Coors Melting Facility. So sometimes farmers will grow specific barley that the Coors Facility wants and then they contract with them and sell it to the Coors Facility. We don't do that, but I know some people do. It might be better to have contracts, but you never know if it's gonna be up or down or when they'll take the contracts. Yes. When you need to pay your bills, you need to be able to get money and if they're not taking to grow is are you going to be able to sell that crop because at the end of the day the green you have turns into dollars and that's how you pay your bills you have to know you'll be able to sell your grain butte over there is called square butte and my dad has a cool story about it the kind of geology that takes place here these were underground streams of lava running and they ran underground until they ran into something harder than what they were pushing against or the lava was pushing and it then went up out of the ground and created these big plateau things like square viewed over here.
vehicles coming into the big shuttle. You can see it filling up from the bottom here. Yeah. They had to fall it all the way up. And it's coming through this tank. We're here at the parts store right now. So if you're ever in Great Falls, Montana, definitely come to the parts store because it's the best parts store ever. They have a very good uh, service. I, I stop here all the time. I buy all, all my parts. All the time. All the parts that I can get to a parts store, I get here. Yes, and it's called The Parts Store in Great Falls, Montana. So it's the absolute best store ever. But mostly the reason I stop here is if I got problems with uh, equipment, especially vehicles and stuff, Roger can almost diagnose it over the telephone. He, oh, he is so good. He knows exactly what's wrong. Exactly, yeah. And I, I keep trying to prove him wrong, but all it ends up is that uh, I'm wrong. Yes. <laughs> I, I quit trying that lately. Yeah, he, he's a very good friend and he's uh, very good at this part scale. And if you have any super hard questions, you can answer them if it has to do with vehicles. So. Definitely. So come to the parts store if you need any parts for really anything. And here's the sign up here. As you can see, the oil's starting to fill up a little bit more. And when this one's full, it'll be full all the way up to here. Now this is how full the shuttle is with oil. It's about 250 gallons almost. Now we've shut it off. Dropping down the oil. Here we're passing by my uncle's cows, and you should comment down below if you want to see a video about the cows. They're in the stubble, and this field was harvested this this last harvest. Right now we're getting out to check to make sure. Yes. And it looks like we're good, Dad. Yeah, I don't think they went anywhere. They moved back a little bit. You can see the straps are still back. We wanted to be careful, though. Now I'm walking a paddle bar, and they call it that because the paddle don't go past it. So you don't have to have a gate here. Now I'm going to get back in the pickup truck because it is cold and windy. We've made it back home, and now we're going to be unloading the oil. We've had it strapped on here. <laughs> that didn't work out too well. Now we're gonna get the forklift inside the shop here. We're hoping it's going to start. We always hope things start in the winter or really any time of the year. All the time, like my dad said. Here's our little forklift to Toyota. Yeah, it's not a Prius, so. It's not a Prius? No. Here we've got some oil already on this forklift. This is also where the cat likes to take nap. Should we do a little forklift tour? Yes, I think so. We might just need to let it sit a minute. Here we have our seat and our steering wheel. Then this looks like the blinker, forward and reverse. These levers do all kinds of things, like raise up, lower, and back and forth, and all kinds of awesome things. And tilt, and we have our steering wheel. Just sit there. Step on the gas, too. And then here's our lawnmower. This one is a zero radius, so it's kind of fun to drive. And then over here we have the four-wheeler that we use to pull the airplane out of the hangar. Here we have the inner workings of the forklift. We can also walk up here and see what's up here. Pretty steep though. Here we have some old combine cutter bars. 
here. And I showed you those in the antique tractor video too. This one's newer. And a couple of these are older. Like that's an older one. All right, now we're going to go and open the shop door for my dad. so that we can have heat, which is so important. As you can see here, my dad has to drag the shuttle to here because his forklift only goes to here and he doesn't have long enough fingers. oil that's right some people get it from the ground we get it from the parts store yes it's just the way you look at it it's a lot easier to get it from the parts store than it is to get it out of the ground but i'd like to have a bunch of oil out of the ground i just don't have any <laughs> down to here right now and it started it up here this is a typical day in the life in the winter on the farm I hope you enjoyed and it's the less glamorous side of farming it's not harvest or getting your crops or even seeding and planting them but it's everything that goes behind the scenes that keeps the farm going. For example, you have to keep your shop heated so that you can work on equipment and so you can keep your equipment running so then you can go and plant your seeds and harvest your crop. Everything you do on the farm is so important because it's why you can harvest your crops after a long, long year of hard work. I'll take you down here and show you a little bit of the reservoir. It is so cool and it's a little bit frozen over right now. So we'll do a little trip down to the reservoir. Here we are. We have a little bit of wire here. So it's fenced. Dad put a lot of fish in here like maybe five years ago, I would say. And then now there's not really any fish in there, but we still see geese occasionally and ducks and lots of fun little animals. I hope you can hear me. It's a bit windy. I'll show you an old bunk house next. Now this wasn't our homestead property. This is one we've acquired over the years, but this was another farmer's family's homestead. And so the house is the homestead and then here we have the bunk house. And we have one of these at grandpa's too. So if you want a bunk house tour on our farm that was homesteaded, definitely comment that below also. But this is what the bunk house looks like here. I haven't been in here in a very long time. As you can see, I went fishing right there 
and also actually on that side over there. I did not ever catch anything though. Fishing isn't particularly my favorite pastime. I really enjoy making these videos. Now a very long time ago when the farmers would homestead, they would plant these trees in order to break the wind. They're very old trees and we have some of these on my grandpa's property too. So that's kind of a cool fun story. Here are headers for our combines and then my combine is the one way in there. So not the first, second, it's that third one. And I think it's the best combine we have, right, Dad? The 9610. Right. <laughs> it's a fabulous combine and we love it. Well, at least I love it. Now we're going out to see some of the wheat that's growing and so you can have a little wheat update because I know you love the wheat because it's really cute. We harvested this side and I actually videoed here. Here we have the wheat coming up in the rows. As you can see right here, here's another good part. It looks a lot like grass, but it is wheat. And right here, and all the way through this field, there's wheat. There's a lot of wheat over here. So we harvested this field in one of my videos, and we harvested the one on the other side of this field also. Ooh, let's go look at this wheat over here. This is pretty cool wheat. See, this part wasn't seeded but this part was. Look how cute the little wheat is. In order for wheat to have a head on it with the kernels, which is what we harvest, and what bread and flour is made out of, it has to freeze in order to create that head for winter wheat. So that's very important to remember. And if you ever try to grow wheat kernels at home, you want to make sure that you freeze them or maybe leave them outside if you live in a climate that gets really, really cold like Montana. And then you'll have amazing wheat to harvest. Now we're going through the rows, trying not to step on any little wheat because that would be very sad. And we're going back to the pickup. This wheat is Warhorse, that's the variety. The type of wheat is winter wheat and the variety is Warhorse. Now Warhorse has great baking qualities and that's what's planted in this field. Hi Grandpa! Now I'm going to be updating you on the wheat in this field. The variety of this wheat is clear field wheat. Here's some growing up right there. And here. It's hard to tell, but it is growing. Here's some of it. If you notice, if someone plants their wheat a week earlier, even the whole field will be green right now. But if you plant your wheat a little bit later, this is what it looks like or it's not even coming up yet. This type is also winter wheat, but the variety is clear field. So now you know what this field is and the field across the street. So it would be very fun to go and harvest it because you've seen it ever since it was planted. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And also, Kate's Egg, I have Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and all of the social media platforms. So it's just Kate's Egg. And for Instagram, it's Kate's underscore A-G. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Bye.